Well, it's a shame that PlayStation Home is gone, but here are some spaces that I really liked visiting. Here are my top ten. At number ten, we have... Dead Nation Space. Pretty much just what you'd expect from it. It's a zombie apocalypse type space. There is a light gun sort of-esque space where it's basically just an on-rail shooter. Not too impressive at all, but to be honest, it's still kind of an interesting space. And when it was a little more active, you could actually interact with other players who had Dead Nation and play the game Dead Nation with them, which in itself was fucking epic. This space also had some interesting little rewards, namely all little zombie stuff statues that you could decorate your little apartment with, which were all pretty cool. Number nine. Pottermore. For those uninitiated, Pottermore is simply put, a website for Harry Potter fans to go and essentially interact with a virtual Hogwarts. So what's the PlayStation Home Space? It actually interacts with the Pottermore website. So basically any progress you've earned or unlock in the website actually transfers over to the Pottermore PlayStation Home Space. But there were a few problems with the space in certain instances where it would have issues connecting with Pottermore's website. So obviously I couldn't get all the footage I wanted to record, but it was pretty interesting to see what you could actually access in the Pottermore space. For example, you could access the particular houses from all the things in Hogwarts, such as Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin House, as well as the Great Hall and several other Harry Potter related events, and there was even Wizards Duels, which I actually had a chance to access on a regular basis because Wizards Dueling didn't exactly have direct influence over the Pottermore website. So basically this little game could feed information back and forth between Pottermore. So for those who are really into Pottermore, this was like the ultimate space. But due to certain connectivity issues with the actual PlayStation Home Space 2 Pottermore.com, that's part of the reason why I'm ranking this solo as a number nine. Moving on to number eight. It's time for some bowling. Well, not really bowling. Technically, this is the bowling alley space, which in itself was a bit of an arcade. There was a few arcade machines that you could play, one of which I really liked, some I didn't like so much, but they were all different variable games. So each game had its own little quirks. Some were good, some were not so good. And then on top of that, you could also play pool, which <laughs> that's actually really fun to play. You can play with friends, play with practice by yourself, and on top of that, you could go bowling in this space. Hey, what's up with that? The bowling actually was mechanically decent. It wasn't the greatest bowling video game experience ever, but the fact that it's like it was all these things in one space, and on top of that, you could chat with randoms and your friends as well. So it was a great way to communicate with friends while playing many different games in one space. Now, moving on. Number seven. Uncharted 3 space. What can I say about this? Basically, it was a nice little space that you could walk around in. It was deeply inspired by Uncharted 3, and it also had a nice little cover shooter mini game around it and did it. The cover shooter mini game was actually pretty difficult to its own right, due to the fact the controls weren't quite as responsive as, say, the Uncharted games as a whole, but it was still a pretty fun game, and the rewards were pretty nice that you could unlock. Plus, there was a leaderboard so you could kind of compare yourself to other players and try to get that nice top leader spot, or at least beat your friend. You know, for them sweet bragging rights. Number six. Ah, we are talking about the sodium spaces. So, what can I say about them? Well, let's start with Sodium 2. Sodium 2, essentially, is a glorified racing game, similar to the vein of games such as the Wipeout series. Specifically, it's like a zero-G, high-speed racing game where your car, or cart, or whatever the hell you want to call it, floats above the ground. Similar to games, as I mentioned before, Wipeout, or even other games like F-Zero, but let's just take a look at H Wipeout HD to compare. See what I mean? Okay, not much to say about that. Decent, solid mechanics, controls work well, blam, done. Moving on to Sodium 1. What was Sodium 1? Well, a lot of things, actually. There was a weird little scorpion hunting thing that wasn't exactly very good at all. <laughs> so, let's ignore that. What was the main draw of Sodium 1? Well, there was this, well, in my opinion, probably the coolest thing, a hover tank minigame, which was super fast, super fluid, and it just, oh my god, like, I spent so many freaking hours just playing this one game. Now mind you, to unlock and have access to the whole thing, you had to spend some money to get some outfit, which you would equip to your avatar, and then you'd have full access to the hover tank thing. Now there was also a bar base that you could access in the main hub area of Sodium 1, where you'd have to have the waitress outfit where you could serve other players drinks. But forget about serving people drinks. Tanks, 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 tanks. Need I say more? Super fast hover tanks. That is all I have to say. Moving on. Number five. What can I say about personal spaces? Essentially, they're an extension of yourself. So, with that being said, 
That's probably why I like visiting them so much. Because of the fact that you can customize them and make them really your own. Speak for yourself. Or, I guess, speak for you. Technically, because you're not making them speak for you. Unless you hold them at gunpoint, but then again, it's a digital space that doesn't actually exist. God damn it, I'm getting my head hurt here. But anyways, what can I say about personal spaces? You can customize them. There's often little things that you can add to them. Some personal spaces come with mini-games attached, some don't. <clears throat> As you can see here in the clips, essentially, the possibilities are seemingly endless. So, yeah, you can earn rewards from other games inside PlayStation Home or outside of PlayStation Home. Earning trophies will also get you awards inside this space, for example, using trophies from games such as Resident Evil 5 will unlock you little things you can display in your apartments. So, yeah, as I said, possibilities are endless. Really express yourself. Anyways, moving on! Also, clubhouses gotta count as personal spaces, too, so, yeah. Number four. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a fan of the Godfather films. <laughs> but aside from that, yeah, I am a fan of the Godfather films. So, what can I say about the Godfather film? It was excellent, it does its job right, and it has a PlayStation home space. Wait, what? Yeah, it's inspired by the Godfather 2 game, of all things. Basically, you can wander around this space, which is themed off of the, I guess you could say, casino from, well, the Godfather video game film trilogy thing. And you can play poker, which, in all honesty, that's two things that are really awesome coupled together. And it's a nice space. So, it's a great space to play poker. So, yeah, how about you play some poker? Play some poker, man. You play the poker. And... Number three. Siren Blood Curse. I was first introduced to it via the PlayStation Home Space, which is why I'm putting this space up so high on my list. And the minigame was actually quite good, because it actually did truly represent some of the aspects of the game. Not to a 100% extent, but the fact that it was also an interesting little twist because it was also cooperative. Unlike most of the other Siren games, which are all single player, this one actually had you essentially cooperate with other players to navigate the halls of the hospital in Siren. From Siren, I should say. So it was a nice little cooperative Siren game. So anyone who really liked Siren, this was the space for them. And if they were new to Siren, this was a great way to introduce them to a series that was bound to creep the hell out of them for years to come. And if I hadn't ever been introduced to this space, I probably never would have ever played Siren to begin with. So, thanks PlayStation Home and the creators of this space, because without your efforts, I never would have played Siren Blood Curse. Hear that? That's a good thing. Moving on. So instead of talking about my number two pick, Home Tycoon, myself, I'm gonna have my sister jump in here and talk over me. So anyways, take it away, Rebecca. Home Tycoon is going to be one of the spaces I'm going to be sad to see go because I spent quite a bit of time and I've also invested some real money into buying some of the pieces of DLC for the game. I kind of want them to make it into a standalone game so stuff like this can't happen in the future and they can give people advance time notice that it may be closing down if they decide they aren't making enough money. Because I didn't get much notice, man. I only got a month, and I had bought the DLC like two months prior, and I didn't get to finish it all. Sad face. So, anyways, let's go on about the game. I liked how you could customize your own city, and if you spent real money, or if you saved up enough of the... I forget what the premium currency was called, but if you saved up enough of it over time, because you could get some in-game for free, uh, you could pay for another city, although to get the in-game currency for free, it would take you forever, <laughs> and it wasn't that much. It was only like 100 points, and 100 points was like a dollar or two dollars and you could build your own an extra city with that which wasn't that big of a deal really when you thought about it so with all of the dlc there were extra missions that you could do and the missions were actually pretty entertaining like there was one where you had to follow around a bear and try to figure out what was going on with it and that one was actually pretty entertaining the bear man Oh my god, that bear. <laughs> that bear was boss, bro. And you could even get it as a car, like, that you could drive around in the game and have the bear in the seat beside you in the car. It was your homie. It was your homie. He was your home slice. <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, what else was there? I'm trying to think. Da -da 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 -da. There was also quite a few other things you could do. There was like racing mini games, and you could go into your friends' like cities as well. I vis I would visit some of my friends in their home, like their cities as well, and it was actually pretty cool because you could in like give them some free points or money for their game by visiting their town and you could get to hang out with them in their town and chat with them in their town and do some events and whatever in their town as well which was pretty fun and it's kind of in a way sort of like SimCity but a little bit of a slightly I guess you could say dumbed down version of it because like yeah it also had a little bit more of a social act uh, than SimCity and trust me, I know because I have SimCity. SimCity now is like, what the fuck? It's so hard. I can bear. I can play it on non-sandbox mode without using any cheats or anything. But dang, it's hard to play it without the cheats because like everyone is like dying all the time, and people are like, "Bitch, you ain't doing enough things for us. You suck. We hate you. Go kill yourself." And I'm like, well, you guys suck. You go kill yourself. <laughs> Cries in a corner. <laughs> Anyways, I don't even know what I was rambling about. Oh yeah, I was rambling about SimCity. Because it's really hot. There is. You could run around to the town and you could put out fires. Because there was a mini game involving the firefighters. There's also a mini game involving the police where you could help out the police force and catch uh, criminals uh, with the car and there was also a mini game for the hospital where you could go and help the sick people get to the hospital and you'd have to be pretty careful with the ambulance because if you hit anything on the way you would lose points and you wouldn't get as much money at the end of it and stuff. Yeah. And with that, I bid you. Number one. Psy or XI or Die or however the hell you want to pronounce it, in my opinion, was the definitive experience in PlayStation Home. As it did a lot of things that no other space has ever once even attempted to accomplish and uh, both a real world aspect and an in-game aspect where basically people were constantly having to collaborate and share information with each other over the internet. Like on several PlayStation Home fan sites had sparked up over this one little game inside of PlayStation Home. Which in my opinion just makes it that much more influential and that much more important to what PlayStation Home was. It also had a bit of a riveting like little conspiracy theory story. There was a whole bunch of other stuff going on. And it did spark a sequel which went on to receive much less praise due to the fact you had to pay for the sequel. But still, the original, for what it did, it did amazingly well. Plus, it was one of the few spaces that actually forced you to physically change the appearance of your avatar and literally cooperate with players in the game, too. It wasn't just outside the game, like I mentioned. Now, mind you, uh, regarding going back to the cooperative bits that were in the quote-unquote real world, uh, it was mostly just looking at particular landmarks and getting information from them. So you had to like talk to people or from around the world that lived in those cities to gather information. Or people who knew enough about that landmark. So it wasn't just a singular thing. It, it felt like it involved a majority of the world that had access to this game. And it just, it was nice to be a part of something this big, even if it was just a game. I imagine this is how a lot of other players feel in a lot of other games, like MMOs and what have you. So, yeah, there you go. This is probably one of the best things that was in PlayStation Home, and it was a shame, because it, it didn't last as long as everything else did in PlayStation Home. It was the first thing to go. And, but while I'm recording this, it was mostly just through the Psy Museum that I was able to record some of the higher definition footage, so... I had to resort to getting some old footage I had discovered through random websites, such as the fan sites and questions, so this is all used clips from other sources. I'll put links to my sources in the description. Hey, if you liked this video, be so kind as to click on one of the links.
uh, over here? Over here? Oh, um, uh, yeah. That'll take you to one of the many videos that I've done in the past and or future. In which case, because annotations! Uh.